first steps. Let's create a new project. This is going to be our new project number one. We will pick here the templates. The templates, if you do NFPA drawings with NFPA symbols, pick the NFP base 001 and here simply click create. This will pull out your project. Now you could have chosen a ZW9 or an EPT. Sometimes you get this message here, don't worry about this. Here you get the description of the first project, first steps, this is my first example here. And you can see we already have one page in here. I will open this page, but I'll change it. So I will double click here on the block frame, or I can right mouse click here, open the properties of this particular page. And I will first change it to page one, make it a schematic multi-line. That's gonna be my first step. That's first steps in e -plan. And what's important also to know is the plot frame. What type of plot frame do you wanna choose? Here we have several different plot frames. The one I'm gonna ask you to choose is the FN1003, which gives us a ladder. You can see here on the left-hand side, rather than having just columns like the IC. You wanna create another page, just go about page new. It's gonna create page number two. That's my second page with the same settings. There we go. So now we have two pages. Let's go back to page number one and let's start. So at the top, we will start with some potential connections. Those potential connections, zooming in is just a roller on your mouse. I will place the first one here and I'll call it L1. That's a good thing. Now I'm going to put another one exactly eight millimeters. Remember here we have a grid which is snapped on and we are using this grid here. You can see down at the bottom it's at four millimeters. So I'm actually going over two steps, putting in the second one, L2, putting in the third one, L3, and eventually also the ground. What is the idea behind these ones? Once you're finished, you can hit the escape key. You can pick all of them, right mouse click, open the properties of all of these three items. You can see here with these fish marks that you have selected more than one object that doesn't have the same values. You can put some default wire sizes, millimeter square American wire gauge. You can put some default colors, yet we all know that colors are different, right? In the UK, in the US, like the L1, L2, L3, is not always the same color as you can see. So depending on which country, you may have this to do this one by one for each individual wire. One we all know is of course the ground. Most of us use a color green, yellow, so we can color this, this one. We can even go a little bit further and assign here the fact that this is a ground PE. Um, we could do this on these other three also and say, okay, what is my overall voltage? What is the potential value in North America? Very often is 575 volts, 60 Hertz. Uh, possible counter, um, potential, I'm going to talk about it maybe a little bit later as we move forward, but typically in a reverse scenario, L1 may encounter to be reversed with L3, and L3 may be reversed and encountered in exchange with L1. But these are details, we don't have to go too far and too deep into it. Now, next step, inserting a symbol. ePlan has all kinds of symbols available. NFPA is the kind of symbol we wish. Here we can see they are in different function. The one we are looking for is a protection device. Protection device, very simple one, this one here. Now, as we want it, we can rotate it. We have two ways to rotate. Either hit the tab button, hit the control button and rotate. And as you're rotating, you can see how the symbol is rotating along. Here, as you place it, you can see that it comes up right away with a device tag. The connection point designations are typically standard. You don't have to change them. You could change them though. And the technical characteristics we will assign a little bit later. But you can see one thing, the wires were connected automatically. Let's go back now to the insertion of symbols. You can either go insert symbols or while you have selected a symbol and you want to go back, you can go backspace and it comes back to this selection. Protection device, we will drill it down a little bit further to motor overloads. We'll pick here the motor overload 
and we will go a few lines down and just place this motor of load. It automatically picks up the MOL, whatever line number you're on, which is typical NFTA, and click OK. I'm going to go backspace again and look for the power consumers. Inside the power consumers, we see a few different motors. The one I'm interested in is the three-phase motor here, which once it's placed, will be aligned with the motor overload, and you get these auto-connecting lines automatically set. And of course, different connection point designations. Now that we have symbols that connect to each other, we also will look at some special symbols called connection symbols. And these are only tricks and tools we use in ePlan. Let's start with the first one here, which is a T node write. The T node write, when you carefully look, has a specific orientation. If you hit the tab button, you can see it actually rotates in four different variants. The one I'm interested in is really this one. So this is the rotation that tells me that the wires are going in the overload and from the overload it's going back out. Now, let's move down or zoom out a little bit and let's take this guy here, just copy it and paste it. Control C, Control V. I'm gonna put it nicely down here, nicely aligned a little bit further and see how ePlan pops up as you insert this with this dialog, just number it. Here you go further down and we'll zoom in in the bottom corner and this time we will insert some additional connection symbols. We'll talk about the interruption point. These interruption points are arrows. You can rotate, again, using the control key, rotate around and carefully look at the arc. There's an arc following my mouse. And as the arc is below the line like this, there, I'm just gonna place it. I'm gonna call it L1. I'm gonna place the second one next to it, L2. I'm gonna place the third one next to it, L3. These will take up some cross-references as I have them inserted on the second page. So on the second page here, just open the page, zoom back up at the top. You can start by inserting and pasting whatever you had copied before. And if you want to place it exactly in the same position, you can use the letters X and Y. We'll place it exactly in the same position. Just number them. You can see they're placed. And finally, just connect the wires using the interruption points. Again, use a control shift key, control key and rotation until you see the arc above the zero line and either type in the value like L1 or what you can also do is you can pick out of the list here, you can pissed, pick the next one. So here you can see L2 and L3, just picking it out of the list and there we go. You get a cross reference between here and the other page. What I'm doing right now is just using the control key and clicking on that green text, which is a cross reference. It tells me that this L2 will appear again on the previous page row 147. There we go. We have our first exercise done.